So let's begin. You had your first midterm. And well, how was it? I talked with a few of you, and your assistants seem to have talked with a few more of you. So what do you think about the exam? OK, how many of you think it, that it was hard? Come on, be courageous. <gülüyor> Zor olduğunu düşünüyor musunuz? Hmm? I think it was average. It was not tough. It was not simple. I've, well, my impression, what I tried to do was to prepare an exam on the average. Now, uh, your assistants told me that some of you were quite uh, pessimistic about the exam. Yani sınavdan sonra kendinizi biraz kötü hissetmişsiniz sanırım. Okay. Well, it is always possible to prepare harder exams, but I will not try to do that. Yani daha zor sınav e, hazırlanabilir tabii de. Yani amaç zor sınav sorumu yapmak değil. I don't think it's necessary. I agree with you. But there are a few things that I try to do in the exam. Yani sınavda yapmaya çalıştığım birkaç şey var. Now, if you have noticed in the exam question, by the way, the solutions and the questions are already on the web page. If you, I, I put them last night. So you can look at the solutions, and if you have any questions, you can discuss with me or with your assistants. But if you have realized, there were at least two questions that were almost like the quiz questions. The rotational motion. In, in the quiz, we had just one mass. In the exam, we had two masses. Quiz sorularınızdan birisi, işte epin ucunda bir tane kütle dolanıyordu. Bir tane kütle vardı. Sınavda ikiye çıkardım. Well, another question was this pull-a question. And the pull-a question was, well, it is, by the way, a problem that you will study in the lab also this week, starting this week. The pull-a question was quite similar to your second quiz. When you had this pull-a, there was one mass on a horizontal surface, and another mass was uh, hanging down. İkinci quizinizde hatırlarsanız, bir tane makara vardı yine. Makaranın bir ucundan bir kütle sarkıyordu. Diğer ucundaki kütle de işte yatay bir düzlem üzerinde sürtünmesiz bir ortamda duruyordu. Uh, one of the questions in the quiz is just a slight modification of this one with the mass not horizontal, the second mass is also vertical. So two quizzes, two questions were almost your quiz questions. Now, after the quizzes, you got grades lower than you expected. I, some of you at least picked up the quizzes also, but almost none of you came to ask me how to solve the quiz questions. So that is something important you have to do. Ask questions. Soru sormanız lazım. Now the asking questions is not always because you don't really understand the question. I mean, some of the things that I came that you don't you didn't really understand was just as a result of when we were discussing with one of you, one or a few of you, you they were just making some sentences that just didn't make sense. So we could correct it. So by asking questions you can let me know what you don't really understand. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to explain the physics in the best way that I know. But that doesn't necessarily ma mean that you will be convinced. But if you are not convinced I, I need to know it. I need to know why you are not convinced, why you are puzzled about that, so that we can discuss about it. And uh, if there are any misperceptions, we can correct it. Now, currently, my only way of getting this is making quizzes. Now, that is one of the reasons why I'm making quizzes, so that in the quizzes I ask you things that I suspect that you don't really understand, so that at the end of it, if my uh, suspicions are correct, we can discuss it further. One example was this. Uh, acceleration in circular motion. What is the direction of the force in when you take a curve? And we did at the end of it, we did a, this demonstration. Şimdi soru sormanızın bir amacı da benim için bir faydası da neyi tam olarak anlamadığınızı bana söyleyecektir. Yani ben sonuçta yapmaya çalıştığım e, anladığım kadarıyla bildiğim en iyi şekilde size anlatmaya çalışıyorum. Ama sonuçta benim bildiğim en iyi şekilde anlatmam. Sizin illa onu anladığınız ya da ikna olduğunuz anlamına gelmiyor. 
anlamadıysanız ya da ikna olmadıysanız benim bilmem lazım. Bunun yolu da ya soru sorarsınız ya da emin değilseniz bile içinizde en ufak bir şüphe bile varsa anladığınız şeyi tekrar edersiniz. It doesn't have to be a question. You can just repeat what you have understood if you have any doubts. So that we can just discuss it. You should ask simple questions. Üç tane quiz olduk. Birincisinde henüz free body diagram nedir bilmiyorduk. Ee, ondan sonra free body diagramı gördükten sonra iki quizde de free body diagram sordum. Ee, sınavda soracağımı söyledim. Mesela şunu merak ediyorum. Sınavda free body diagramlarını kesin doğru çizdiğini düşünen kaç kişi var? Free body diagramlar. How many of you think that you have draw the correct free body di diagrams in the exam? Okay, that is good. Yes or no? Yes, okay. Okay, that I'm happy. I would be happy to see that. I haven't yet started reading your exams. I would like to do it as soon as possible so that I can also follow what you don't understand and if necessary we can go over the previous subjects again. Okay, so you should ask simple questions. Okay, at least in the quizzes that I have read. In the first quiz I had asked you about the free body diagrams which almost none of you could draw. In the second quiz, I asked the free body diagrams, which none of you could draw. But I think there was at least one week between the two quizzes, and nobody asked me how to draw the free body diagrams. I mean, there were all these fancy questions about how the stars behave, how everything behaves, but nobody asked me about how to draw free body diagrams. Why not? Or anything else simple. Well, another mistake, okay, so, okay, this is an important point. You have certain bad habits that you have been taught throughout the years. And in all your secondary school, in high school, you were taught to solve problems in a given way, which were, I, I mean, which were absolutely wrong. Like the centripet centrifugal force, merkez kaç kuvveti diye bir kuvvet yoktu. Tamamen yanlış öğrettiler size. Böyle kötü alışkanlıklarınız var hala böyle düşünmek gibi. Ama bunlar yıllar içerisinde öğrendiniz. And it will, not, it will take more than a few months to correct them. So if you, if you get a low grade in the exam, we will see how you did. Just don't get disappointed. It, it just gets, takes time to correct things. I mean, things that you have learned in years, we cannot just correct it in a few days. We ha you have to talk, you have to disc you have to talk. You I mean, This, I, most of the time, I am the one doing the talking. But you have to talk, you have to ask questions, you have to discuss, so that we can correct these bad habits. I mean, just by looking at you, sitting there, I don't really know what your bad habits are, or if your bad habits are being corrected or are changing or not. So only if you talk with me, make comments, participate in the class, I will know what your bad habits are. Okay, so forces, the concept of force. And I will, okay, this is mainly related with your third quiz. And also with, I was discussing with a few, with a, with a friend of yours, just before the exam on Friday, she had some questions. And apparently, some uh, senior students also had the same misconception about the forces, what are forces. Now, when I talk with you, one of the things that is quite confusing for you, it seems to be, is that you invent all these kind of forces. There is the centripetal force in the quizzes. Uh, in the third quiz, okay, uh, a majority of you, I cannot say 70%, 80%, but close to 80% of you considered the velocity as a force. So when you were asked to write down the components of the, the write the force, all the, I mean, the second question was asking you to write the forces in terms of their components. About half of you wrote the components of velocity. Okay, it could have been just a misunderstanding about the language, but on Friday when we were discussing with your friends, she was also saying that, okay, what about the force due to velocity? There is no such force. It doesn't exist. The only forces we have, the only for well, we have only four forces in nature. Gravity, electromagnetic forces, these two are the things we will study this semester. 
the weak and the strong interaction, the nuclear forces, we will not study them. So we can just, for the time being, we can discard them. But we have only two forces, the gravity and electromagnetic interaction. And there is no other force. No force due to velocity, no force due to acceleration, no force pointing uh, out of the circle in circular motion. Yes. That is the electromagnetic force. Well, in everyday life, we only experience gravity. Well, that is your weight. You always have your weight. And the electromagnetic force shows itself through friction, any pull or a push. This is electromagnetic force and no other force. Well, if you, what is happening here, when I'm pushing this thing, it is just the electromagnetic repulsion between the electrons in my hand and the electrons in this table. Friction is also electromagnetic force. It is just the interaction between the, as I slide my hand, it is the interaction between the electrons, mainly the electrons in my hand and the electrons in the table, on the surface of the table, that causes this friction. And there's no other force. Now, the discussion was mainly on Friday about the roller coaster example. Well, the reason why I choose this example, by the way, is these are the, some of the things that I know that there are misperceptions. So, roller coaster seçmemiz sebeplerinden biri kafanızı karıştıracak bir problem olduğunu düşündüğüm için. Hmm? It has to be. Kafanızın karışması lazım. Yanlışları başka türlü düzeltemeyiz. Çünkü o kadar eminsiniz ki onların doğru olduğundan öncelikle onların yanlış olduğunu göstermem gerekiyor. Well, the roller coaster example I chose on purpose to make you confused. Because you are, you have such beliefs in things that are not really true. First, I have to challenge them. This is a challenge for them. Here at the top of the roller coaster, the cart doesn't fall down, although only the only forces acting on it are the gravity, weight, and the normal force. They just uh, represent uh, a consequence of the electromagnetic force. Both of them pointing downward. There is no force pointing upward or in the horizontal direction when I'm here. The only force is pointing downward, but it does not fall down. It is falling down. But the velocity, its speed at the top point, just makes sure that it follows this rail. Tam tepeye geldiğinde bunu yukarı doğru çeken herhangi bir kuvvet yok. Bütün kuvvetler bir ağırlığı var. Dünya yüzeyinde deney yapıyorsanız her zaman için bir ağırlık olacaktır. Ağırlığı var. Bir de normal kuvvet var. Normal kuvvet dediğimiz zaten e, railların buna uyguladığı itme kuvveti. Eğer çok hızlı giderse raylar buradaki e, arabayı itecektir. Ki o da elektromanyetik kuvvet sonucu, itme kuvveti ve ikisinin de yönü aşağı doğru. Ama bu buradan kalkıp da aşağı düşmüyor. Yukarı doğru çeken bir kuvvet olduğu için değil, bunun bir hızı olduğu için. Yeah. So any questions about this one? I still go back to this one. Yes. Exactly. That is the, that, that, that's the criteria. So you see, when it leaves the track, at the moment that it leaves the track, the normal force is zero. So that is the criteria. That is how we impose this condition that it leaves the track. In general, if it is going around, there is always a normal force. But the normal force will be changing depending on where we are and how fast this is moving. At the bottom, the, it is moving really fast, so the normal force will be quite large. The normal force should also work against gravity, against its weight. It, the normal force should cause it to accelerate upwards. At the top, the normal force is working with gravity, so we need less normal force at the top. And th at the threshold value, when the cart is about to leave the rails, the normal force is zero. 
Şimdi burada olan olay şey normal kuvveti sıfır olduğunu kabul ettik ama ne, ne için sıfır? No, normalde normal kuvvet sıfır falan değil. Ama hızı öyle olabilir ki tam raylardan ayrılmaya baş bunun tamamen etrafında dönemeyebilir ya da ancak dönebilir. Ancak dönebilme koşulu da şuradan geçmesi lazım. Kritik nokta orası. Buradan geçtikten sonra zaten dönecektir. Kritik koşul buradaki normal kuvvetin sıfır olmasıdır. Şimdi normal ku- kuvvet sıfırdan büyükse gayet rahat döner zaten etrafında. Ama normal kuvvet sıfırsa düşmek üzeredir. Biraz daha yavaş giderse normal kuvvet negatif bir normal kuvvete ihtiyacımız var. O da eğer tutmuyorsa raylar kartı buradan aşağı düşecektir. Any other questions about this roller coaster example? In this example, yes, we ignored friction. It will not stop there. Orada durmayacak. At there, its speed has to be finite. And in fact, its speed has to be, well, if you put theta is equal to pi over 2, v squared has, the speed should be square root of gr. There, it, it should have a speed. Otherwise, it will fall down. En tepede bir hızı olmazsa şayet, aşağı düşecek tabii. Ama yukarıda bir hızı varsa, Aşağı düşerken yana da gidecek. Ama aşağı inerken aynı zamanda yana da giderse o zaman bu rayları takip edebilir. Koyduğumuz kriter zaten o. Yani projectile when, when we are doing the projectile motion, the mass as it moves sideways, it is also falling down, moving downwards because of the acceleration. So that is what we are doing over here. So we are requiring it to have a finite velocity here. So that as it moves sideways, there is no force. Well, at this point, there is no force in the horizontal direction. So only at this instant, it will be moving with constant horizontal velocity. Plus, the velocity will develop a perpendicular component. So at this point, if it has sufficient velocity, it will just make such a curve. It will move sideways also. And since it is moving sideways and also at the same time downwards, will be able to follow the rail. But there is no force, no additional force there. If it has this initial velocity, v squared is equal to gr, after this point, it will just speed up and it will always follow the rail. Eğer tepede GR hızı varsa aşağı indikçe bu hızlanacak zaten. Hızlanacağı için tepe noktasını geçebildikten sonra mutlaka burayı takip edecektir. Because it's a circle. And if the motion was, if it had, I don't know, after this point, if there is a horizontal piece, then it will not be able to follow the track. Bir şey alabilir miyim? Nerede? So if the roller coaster had such a shape rather than being a circle, okay, we have the circular region and flat that even if it reaches this point, it will fall down. Because you see, the trajectory after this point, it is just trying to go through a parabola. The parabola çizmeye çabalıyor. This will be the trajectory. That is, in the absence of the rails, the train is trying to take. So if the rails are above this parabola, it will just leave the parab- leave the tracks. Eğer tam şu tepe noktaya geldi, hatta bu karekök GR hızıyla geldi, buraya geldikten sonra yapmaya çabalayacağı şey bunun bir parabol çizmektir. 
sadece ağırlığı olsaydı normal kuvvet olmasaydı. Sadece ağırlığı altında. Eğer sizin raylarınız bu parabolün üzerinde kalırsa o zaman raylardan ayrılacak. Parabolün üzerinde kalırsa raylarınız o zaman normal kuvvet tepede sıfırsa burada da sıfır olacak. Çünkü no, raya ihtiyacı yok bu parabolü takip etmek için. Yok raylarınız bu parabolün altında kalırsa o zaman bu ta, treni içeri doğru itmek zorunda raylarınız normal kuvveti olacak. Now in this case at the top point when it reaches the top and it has such a velocity it will just try to follow this parabola. Now if your rails are above this parabola then the rails will just I mean the cart will not follow the rails. And if your rails are just following this parabola in that case if the normal force is zero at the top it will stay zero all through the parabola because the rail do not, will not have any effect on the trajectory of your cart. But if the rails are below this parabola, then the rails have to push your cart inside such that the, tra the train will be able to follow the rails. And for the case of a circle, the circle always lies below this parabola. So anybody else who believes that there are additional forces except on the normal force which at the top it is pointing downwards and the gravity which is also pointing downwards. Those are the only two forces we have. Yes. Why not? Right. Well, what we know is, right, what I'm assuming here is, it has this v squared is equal to gr speed at the bottom. So this is the initial speed. No, sorry. Uh, at here, it has v squared is equal to gr. v is equal to that speed over there. This is what I'm assuming. At this point, the normal force is zero. Because that is the that is how we drive this one. Mv squared over r should be equal to the weight of my object without any normal force. So if that is that criteria is satisfied, then v squared is equal to gr. Let me go to the previous slide. If v squared is equal to gr, at the top point, the only force acting on my mass is its weight. Tepede eğer hızı v kare eşittir gr ise tepede sadece normal kuvvet var. Now, after that point, if you just imagine it as a projectile with an initial speed, v is equal to square root of gr. We have studied projectile motion. And the motion of this object after this point is just this parabola. So for this car to follow this trajectory, the only force I need is its weight. I shouldn't have any other force. Well, if the rails are also following this line, the same line, it is just like I am walking and a friend of mine is walking by my on my side. We are just walking together. But I'm not exerting any force on him. He is not exerting any force on me. It's just like that. If, in this case, this is the trajectory in the absence of the normal force. So if the rail is following that, the rail shouldn't exert any force. If it exerts any force, it will create an additional acceleration. But that means the trajectory will change. Yes. OK. So let's see. I put some. Your, so your friend's question is: Suppose we just uh, push something towards the wall. 
If I release my hand, it will fall down. So shouldn't the wall exert any force on it? No. Nothing. Because if, the, remember, force is always defined in terms of acceleration. Now, if this is accelerating with the acceleration due to gravity, G, that means the only force acting on it is its weight. There cannot be any other force. Now, if I release this thing, well, at this point, it stays on the wall between my hand and the wall because of friction. I'm exerting some force on this tissue. That exerts a force on the wall, and the wall exerts a normal force on the tissue. The force that I exert and the force that the wall exerts, they just balance each other so that it doesn't move in the horizontal direction. Uh, so we know the normal force. And the friction is just the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. And that balances the weight at this point. If I re re remove my hand, I'm not exerting any force anymore in that direction. So the wall should not exert any force in this direction. So the, the normal force is zero, the friction force is zero. The only force left is the weight. It is just like, I mean, this is just, I mean, this and this one are not different, you know, at all. They are the same thing. What do you mean two walls? Well, this is between two walls. One wall is over there, one wall is over here. So this is one wall. This if I if the two walls are pressing towards each other, there will be friction. If I remove one of the walls, there will not there won't be any friction. Depends on how you put the walls. And if there is a wall that is not touching, to, if one of the walls is not touching to the wall, not exerting any force on the wall, then it will not move. Or let's do another example. This one, just imagine this is a wall. Oops. If it is leaning, so now the two walls are pushing towards each other. There is friction force, so it doesn't fall down. But if I remove this wall, there is no friction left. No. Okay. These are the only forces we have. Now, the, uh, did everybody understand the question? I think it's a nice question, which mo gets most of you confused. The question was, soru şu. Merkez kaç ku merkezcil kuvvetimiz var, merkez kaç kuvvetimiz yok. Merkezcil kuvvetimiz var, merkezcil kuvveti niye free body diagramda göstermiyoruz? Yes. Can you repeat in English or should I? which we apply usually, right, in the standard case. But you are still making the assumption that there is this, nor this uh, centripetal force, 
plus the other forces we have, and they are in the same direction. That is what you have said both in English and in Turkish. Can you speak a bit louder? The magnitude of the center of these forces. Almost. Any, anybody wants to add anything? Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that, that's true. The thing is, you see, let's just think of Newton's second law. What you say, F is equal to mass times the acceleration. So if you show the forces in the free body diagram, so those are the forces you, ha you have are the, either the gravitational force or one manifestation of the electromagnetic force. These are what you have over there. And this force, the sum of them, should be equal to mass times the acceleration of the object. In this example, you don't say that since uh, an object has an acceleration, there is a force for it created by that acceleration. You don't say that. You just say that there, is, there are forces acting on my object, independent of the acceleration, and that creates my acceleration. Now, what we do in circular motion is that we say that the acceleration of this object with circular motion has magnitude v squared over r. So there, there will be, again, forces acting on my object, which are only and only electromagnetic and gravitational, no other force. All these forces should create some acceleration whose magnitude is given by this one. So the net force acting on my object has to be mass times this acceleration. In, in, the, in the sense of this uh, friction force and the gravitational force, even the centripetal force doesn't exist. There is no such force. The other forces, the uh, gravitational force and the electromagnetic forces should combine to give me some centripetal force. And its magnitude should be related to the speed and the radius of my mass, the, the, the mass of my object and the radius of its circular motion. So there is no force, there is no centripetal force to show on the free body diagram, neither here. So here is the free body diagram at this instant. The only forces I have is the normal force and its weight, nothing else. These two should combine to give me a centripetal force in the central direction whose magnitude is mv squared over r. Orbit. No, it's not a force. It's not a force. Well, what prevents this thing from uh, separating from the rail is, is its speed. This is not making a free fall because of the rails. The rails are exerting some normal force. If the normal force is non-zero, it's no longer making free fall. But in the event that it is making a free fall, 
in Devanta, it's to, well, in this example, this parabola is the free fall example. So if this were my track, and my mass arrives here with this velocity, after that point, what prevents what prevents it from leaving the track is that is that the motion will be just free fall. It is freely falling. But it also cannot leave the track because the track is also following its trajectory. Now, in the case of the orbit, well, if it has some sufficient velo if it has a very small velocity, just think of Felix. He was in 40 kilometers above the surface. Probably you will not forget Felix for the rest of your life, right? Just think of Felix. He, he made a free fall, but if you imagine that something just threw him in this direction with a very small velocity, then he would just make a free fall and fall here. If you throw him with a larger velocity, he will fall here. If you throw it with a larger velocity, he will fall here. Even with a larger velocity, larger speed, he will eventually come back. So the thing, he's freely falling. But the reason why he cannot hit Earth is its speed. It is missing speed because of its velocity. So I was probably not clear at that time. It is its speed that causes it, that prevents it from falling on the surface of the Earth. Its speed plus the surface of the Earth is running away. It is making a free fall. Okay. So it is making a free fall. The satellites are making free falls. But well, let's see. If it was, if the Earth was horizontal, and in, no matter what the speed was, it would, if you throw it with a larger speed, it will fall here, a larger speed, it will fall here, a larger speed, it will fall here. But the Earth is not flat. So the Earth is also curved. So the surface of the Earth is running away. That is what keeps the orbits, the satellites in orbit. Again, there is no force that pushes it outward. There is no force that pushes it in the horizontal direction. There is only a single force acting on the satellite, the gravitational attraction pointing toward the center. And that force pointing toward the center. And that force that is pointing toward the center should provide the centripetal force. There is no additional centripetal force. But the gravitational attraction in this case that provides my sufficient acceleration for my uh, object to go around, to accelerate around the planet. <coughs> Any other questions? I like my script so much. What are the impact? Gezegen serbest düşmeye duruyor. Sürekli serbest düşüyor. Eğer dünya dün olsaydı serbest düşme ne olacaktı? Buradan birini yolladık diyelim ki şöyle bir parabol çekecek. Biraz daha hızlı yollasaydık böyle bir parabol çekecek. Biraz daha hızlı atsaydık böyle bir parabol çekecek. Her zaman için parabol çekecek. Ama dünyanın yüzeyi yüzeyi, yüzeyi kaçmaya başlıyor. Yüzeyi kaçacağı için Şöyle gidecek, gidip burada çarpacağına, dünyanın yüzeyini burada çarpacağına, yüzeyi uzaklaştı. E biraz daha hızlı atladığında böyle gelip şurada çarpacağına, e, yüzey kaçıyor sürekli, <gülüyor> gelip burada çarpıyor. Yeterince hızlı yollarsa, yüzey sürekli yeri kaçacağı için tekrar gelip aynı noktaya çarpıyor. Ama sürekli serbest düşme yapıyor. <gülüyor> I'm trying to catch him. So if he's there, I can 
never go and catch him. If he runs away as I move, I get a surprise. We can just go indefinitely like this. That is what happens here, since the Earth is a sphere, sort of a sphere. The surface can run away from my orbit, my object indefinitely. So, as my object is falling toward the circle, toward my planet, the surface of the planet is running away. My planet is constantly following Earth, chasing Earth, but the surface of the Earth is constantly running away, just like it.
Yes, if the earth is round, that's why it doesn't fall down. So if the planet is not round, it's not round, it's not round, it's not round, it's not round, then it will be no single motion around it? Well, if the earth is infinitely heavy, infinitely wide and flat, then there, you cannot really go around it. That will not be in circular motion. Thank you. 